The Super Cities network failures follow Wellington's own struggle to keep its trains moving this week. Passengers faced a commuting nightmare as only half the train services ran for three days. And all of this comes as protesters repeatedly brought the city's road network to a halt, demanding more funding for restoring passenger rail. Our reporter Perry Wilton took a deep dive to see just what's going on with our country's trains. Scenes like these have failed to spark joy among New Zealand's politicians. Simply idiotic. Extremely dangerous and totally counterproductive. The actions and tactics of this group has gone too far. But the cause behind the protests, restoring passenger rail, has proved not nearly as offensive. It's safer, it reduces emissions, it is... Um, you know, which can reduce congestion as well. Rail travel is incredibly attractive. It's something that used to exist right across New Zealand. And that's more true than some realise. Almost all of New Zealand was once accessible by an old locomotive. These maps by Sam van der Weeden show every rail line that ever carried passengers for an extended period of time. Massey University's Robert McLaughlin says it's no mystery why they're no longer operating. There's just been underinvestment in the whole train network and the, all the different parts of it, the tracks, the trains, the operators, uh, for quite a long time. Of course, we do have a um, sort of functioning train system in some parts of the country, but uh, it struggles quite a lot uh, and... Uh, it's not just the last few weeks, is it? Aucklanders and Wellingtonians, New Zealanders deserve high quality, frequent, affordable public transport services that they can rely on. We need that for our climate. While Transport Minister Michael Wood has expressed some interest in decarbonising travel by reducing air travel... The government is really interested. We're putting more resource into rail. We're working with lots of groups. Our MPs have set up a select committee inquiry. The Greens argue it's too little too late. We don't yet have the right organisations to fix up our tracks and deliver those services and I would say we don't even have enough funding so it needs to be a much bigger priority. So while the protests are driving Wellington up the wall, there are hopes it won't derail efforts to get the country's train transport network back on track. Perry Wilton, News Hub.